some really cool drills to, to work something called visual systems which was originally invented by, by one of my guitar teachers Robert Newton III who taught in Columbia and was a light to, to many many guitar players and, and at this point actually is, is kind of on hard times and any revenue earned from this particular video will go to help Robert Newton but he really influenced me and helped me see the guitar in a completely different way by through an exercise called visual systems and the heart of visual systems actually is, is an exercise called orbits which is what we're going to kind of walk through uh, in, in pieces through this video. And a lot of this actually is already kind of presented in some other videos that I've made called Talking with the Guitar. If you want to go back and, and review those, we talk about interval shapes, um, how far uh, in notes are from one another, and how you put those together into chords, how you put those together into scales. And I have some jam concept videos actually that build off of that too, where you can work that over major seven chord. We talk about dominant seven chords talk about um, minor seven chords and kind of work a pentatonic scale ideas through the blues using a lot of these exercises. So the main heart of, of, of orbits is the idea that you take an area of the guitar to drill specifically interval shapes. And we're going to start and take a lot of time with, with just octave shapes just to kind of walk through and get used to drilling those. And then we'll talk really quickly about how you can apply those ideas to work all the interval shapes on the guitar and then kind of see the guitar and, and you might even start to see chord shapes or scale shapes that you've been playing for a long time in a completely different way which can be very cool. We're going to start off kind of going over orbits and what visual systems are by using octave shapes. And octave shapes are, are the distance from one note to another note with the same name. So an A to an A note for instance would be an octave. So we can even take the low E string on the fifth fret, A note, work that to the D string on the 7th fret as a shape on the guitar that, that is an octave shape on the guitar. Now from that, that A note on the low E string, there are other A notes that are very near to that. You can work the low E string to the 5th fret. how that 
that shape changed, what would have been 7th fret on the B became 8th fret on the B, with a B string shift there. And then from there we could work the D string to the high 8th third, which you'll notice that shape kind of stays exactly the same, which is cool, from the, from the A string to the B, to the D to the high E, same shape for the high one. But on the other side, it shifted. <laughs> um, so it's all about the B string. And then we could take the G string 5th fret C notes. So what we're doing is kind of working straight across the guitar here. Kind of low E 5th, D string 5th, G, uh, or low E 5th, A string 5th, B string 5th. So now we're going G string 5th, kind of a C note, and we could work and look for C notes um, with those octave shapes. So you could work the G string 5th, the low E 8th, would be a C to a C. The G string 5th to the A string 5th, C note and doing what Robert would call orbiting it <laughs> to find all the other C notes. So that C note on the G string is our center of the universe, and those other C's we're imagining are those planets, <laughs> which is very cool. So then we could go to the B string 6th fret, and this is weird, but if you make that shift, it'll help you kind of see how that, that shapes get shifted by the B string one, one fret away. So we can take the B string 6th fret F note and work that to the A string on the 8th fret F note. It's kind of one of our shapes. And then from the B string 3rd to the D string, or the B string 6th to the D string 3rd is that F to an F note. So you can kind of drill those two shapes. And then from there we can take the high on the 6th fret, kind of keeping the, the shapes going. Um, and what we're really doing is working fourth shapes, actually, randomly across that kind of a, the A to the D, D to the G, G to the C, C to the F, F to the B flat. So every time we're kind of shifting by a fourth, kind of A, B, C, D, D, E, F, G, G, A, B, C, <laughs> C, D, E, F. Um, and now, so we're, we're taking the high E string on the sixth fret B flat note, and you can find another B flat on the D string in eighth fret. It would be a B flat to a B flat. On the sixth fret to the G string, sixth fret would be another B flat. So kind of taking both of those shapes from that high. Uh, you also have the low E string on the sixth if you wanted to throw that in. But it just drilling that one exercise, which you can get really good speed on these actually. You know, once you kind of start seeing like how the shapes move, um, you can really drill octave shapes really well into your mind. So you could take low E on the fifth, and then kind of work those notes for the A. And then you could take the A string fifth, or work those, those other D notes. Um, take the D string fifth to other G notes. C, uh, G string on the fifth for a C note, and work your other C notes. Then take the F note on the B string, work your other F notes around it. Take the high E on the sixth B flat note. was introduced to me through Robert what was working this as a chord building exercise. And normally we build chords in thirds. So we go from, from what would be the root of the chord to root to a third, third to a fifth, fifth to a seven, seven to a nine, nine to an eleven. <laughs> and then from an or to eleven. And then from an eleven we go to a thirteen, then you'd be back to the root. Now, another way of thinking about that actually is thinking more in, in terms of scale shapes, which instead of working it up root 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, you'd be thinking more root 3, 5, 7, and then you could call the 9 a 2, and then you could call the 11 a 4, and you could call the 13 a 6. 
So, so it might be a little bit easier thinking about it in, in smaller terms. Root three, five, seven, nine is really a two, and then four and six, two, four, six. So, so what we could do is we could take the third shapes, because that would be the first little building block of a chord, and then look at third shapes on the guitar. So if from, from the low E string fifth, kind of working that same area, you'd have something Robert would call a same string third, because this from the low E fifth to the A, or the, the low E string on the ninth fret, is a third shape, kind of that one, two, three of the scale. So that same string idea, we could even take that one shape, drill it um, across the guitar using those same root notes. So kind of an A to a C sharp, D to F sharp, G to B, C to E, F to A, E flat to D is kind of that shape. And then from there we could take kind of a, a look at another third from the A. Um, so we'd have low E on the fifth, and we could work the A string on the fourth fret. It's kind of another way to play A to C sharp, A, B, C sharp, so A, C sharp. So we could take that shape and look at how that shape changes as we move through all those root notes. So you'd have the low E root to third, A string root to third, D string root to third, so all those are the same shapes, but when we get to the G string, fifth fret, your third suddenly becomes the fifth fret on the B string. So that's our B string shifting things by one shape, or one fret in the shape. And then if we take the B string sixth, we actually go back to our old shape. It's kind of our, our sixth fret on the B and our fifth fret on the high E. And then from the high E, sixth, well, we don't have the, a next string. And the, these would be called above adjacent. Uh, and then the way Robert would think about this. They're adjacent strings. It's a note above the other note. So an A A or an above adjacent. So you could take that shape and then drill it from our roots. And then we could look for other third shapes. <laughs> and this is where things get a little interesting. Um, so you could take the A string D note, for instance, it's kind of that fifth fret on the A. And what we were doing is playing F sharp notes when we were playing our, our thirds. Now from the A string fifth, another place you could find an F sharp note would be on the low E second fret. So this would be a below, um, because we're playing a string below the other one. Um, and so towards the floor is up, towards the ceiling is, is down. <laughs> um, but A string fifth to low E on the second is another D F sharp. So it's a below adjacent shape. We have kind of a D to an F sharp working A string fifth to low E second. So we can take that shape and move it. So we could take the D string, G note, Orbit. 
notes all the way through all of those notes. So what you would do is take that low E fifth A note and then work all the third shapes around that note, kind of orbiting it. So you have low E fifth to the same string, low E nine, low E fifth. to 
because it's too far away. But if you want to jump into that, kind of the B string, six, the G string on this, the first fret would be a flat third, kind of F to A flat. We got our same string flat third, and then we got our above adjacent flat third. And then from there we have the high E six, it's kind of our B flat to a D flat on the G string. Sixth fret on the high E to the B string, second fret for D flat, and then high E sixth to the high E ninth is kind of a flat third shape. So that way you got a quick exercise to kind of drill just those flat third shapes. shapes and chords that you're playing and, and scales that you're playing. And then from the third, normally in a chord building, we would go from root to third to a fifth, kind of, kind of skipping over some things. So this goes into power chord shapes, actually, if you're familiar with A5 as a power chord, those can be really cool to kind of see the above adjacent shapes we see a lot in, in rock. However, um, you can take the low E fifth to the D string, second fret is, is kind of working the root to fifth. Same instead of our major or our minor or our dominant seven or our major seven chord, sometimes we have something called a flat five in a chord shape. Specifically the diminished chord. <laughs> um, so you may want to take flat five shapes and work them. And flat five shapes are, are a little weird. Um, kind of the tritone is the main deal here. Kind of whole three whole steps. Okay. 
and that one that we had below adjacent sharp five shape two is, is we, we'd end up adding in the same string kind of a would be going to an f note. so you could do that from the low e fifth to the first fret on the low e f so root sharp five 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 kind of becomes a shape two so we have our low e fifth to our same string low e fifth to the a string sharp five low e string to the d string sharp shapes actually as we're going through the sharp five shapes you'll start going hey wait that's a third the other way and it is because <laughs> if this is the root on the d string fifth the a string sixth is a sh is a sharp five or flat six or so flat 13 even but if the a string six was the root the d string would be your third so that's how you're looking at things it's, it's all perspective but uh, d string fifth Or 
size the drill sharp five shapes kind of root of sharp five root 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 sharp five shapes actually these are kind of cool because we'd have an A note and a regular seventh would be a G sharp note so an A to a G sharp on the low E string would be going from fifth fret to fourth fret on the low E kind of root seven or we could work it off our other octave kind of the D string seven to go from the low E fifth to the D string on the sixth fret it's kind of seven root seven root seven so we might want to take more you know that each of those shapes G 
string. So then we'd be going from the root to the third to the fifth to the seventh to the ninth, which is also a T. <laughs> so our second, our whole step in, in front, actually kind of, we got the same string shape. So kind of low E fifth to seven. So we can try that for our roots. And then we have an above adjacent, kind of from the low E fifth to the A string second fret. So we can kind of work our above adjacent.
root 4, and then A string root 4, root 4, and then B string root 4. flat sixes with, with our, our sharp fives. So the only interval that we have left is a six, actually, or a 13. So you have low E fit to the second fret on the low E string. It would kind of be a same string six, root to six. So we can take that shape, root six, root six, root six, root six. You'll notice this looks like the flat three shape, but now we're thinking of the other guy as the root. Um, so root six, root six, root six, root six, root six. Root six. From the low E fifth, we have a six to the A string on the nine. Kind of be a root six. Not working the A to an F sharp here. So we can take that shape and drill that. Kind of for our roots. And then from there, um, oh wait, we've got another root six from the low E on the fifth. Thank you. 
shapes. Exercise kind of working the orbits, and, and I think this really this lesson almost deserves a disclaimer, like a warning on it. Like, don't practice these so much, or the mystery of the guitar might completely be lost, <laughs> because it, you really start to kind of see everything in relationship to a root note. When you start playing scales, you may start thinking of there's this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, or seeing the shape of the seven. shape for instance you may start thinking about that as oh well that's a root and that's a five and that's a root and that's a third and that's a fifth and that's a root or that's a root and that's a five and that's a root and that's a flat three and that's a five and that's a root so you start to see what shapes it gives you names for things that you may be playing it's like oh yes that minor seven voicing but I'm adding the nod on, on the high A gives you a way of kind of calling reminding yourself and talking with other people about what intervals you're playing with in a tune, or even building chords out of these shapes can be very cool too. Like for, for instance, uh, one of my favorite sounds actually, well, is kind of a suspended second chord, kind of a police idea here, but kind of root five nine, for instance, can be a very, very cool shape. And what's really going on here is you got a fifth and then another fifth, so it's kind of like root to five, root to five.
interesting sounds. Taking little pieces and kind of working them together. Or even taking the flat third shapes, kind of diminished chord shape. Oh, that's kind of a flat three plus a flat three. and especially the just the, the drill of the orbits to kind of kind of kind of focus in and, and, and be able to see the guitar a little bit more clearly with things that you're doing. And, and you'll just you'll just start to see those shapes and everything. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a C chord, but that's a third shape. Oh my gosh, it's a G chord, but that's a third shape. Oh my gosh, that's a D chord, but that's a fifth shape, and that's a third shape. You know, just kind of, kind of start to see things. It's kind of that, that you know, five root, five root, three, five kind of way of looking at things. clarify some some shape or exercises for you and kind of give you some things to practice and there's no end if you practice these you know every day for for years you, you will start to see the guitar in a completely different light um, and maybe start experimenting with some different sounds like, like I said this really is a lesson that was taught to me by, by, by the great Robert Newton the uh, third who taught in Columbia for forever and like I said if, if, if I make any revenue off of this video I'll pass that on, on to him because um, this is really his lesson not mine. Best of luck.